Those who don't understand your anti-establishment appeal, what do you stand for? Um, I think it's sort of defined in the mission of social capital, which is that I believe in an even starting line. I think that's probably the simplest encapsulation of, of my belief in how the world should work, which is that you know, we should all effectively get access to the same resources and that as many of us as possible should be allowed to get to the starting line and then the gun should fire and then the outcomes will be what the outcomes will be. Um, and I think a lot of us feel that that isn't necessarily always the case, that there's kind of entrenched hierarchies that prevent progress. So I push against those because they, they touch a very deep emotional part of my value system. Um, and I just don't think that the world is a better place for them. And I think we're better off without them. Chamath, you have acquired a powerful and influential voice, increasingly so, on Wall Street. Um, why were you so excited by the GameStop short squeeze and then so outraged when Robin Hood had to throttle buy orders? Look, on the way in, I think what GameStop showed was the narrative fallacy uh, on Wall Street. I think for years, there was these folks that sort of, you know, were these wizards behind the veil. And um, they had a way of conducting themselves that purported to be just intellectually superior to everybody else. Um, but in reality, what that short showed was that they were prone to the same, you know, poor decision making um, and broken systems and technologies that everybody else has to deal with. Um, and so I found that kind of funny. Um, I think it also spoke to the fact that, you know, we really haven't looked closely enough at the systems that were broken as a result of 1998 and LTCM, long-term capital management, then 2006, seven and eight with Bayer and Lehman. Um, and we're allowing the same problem, you know, slightly different, but roughly the same problem to repeat itself over and over again. Um, and so that's what sort of angered me about GameStop. Um, and then on the, on the back end of it, I just felt like these two worlds collided in a way where I doubt that in the end, in the final analysis, there was any collusion of any kind, but just the stench of this whole thing just goes to show you back to where we were talking about before, about how difficult it is for normal everyday folks to have access to any kind of return. So if you, if you know, sort of we break down the capitalist philosophy, they are just fundamentally stuck in this cul-de-sac of always being labor and always being sort of at the, you know, ownership of the, of, of capital, of the ownership class. And then the fact that normal folks can't get access to returns and, you know, close the inequality gap is just going to make all of the things we're dealing with today a lot worse than they already are.